Welcome. In this video we are going to talk about the congruent number problem. Uh, despite its name it doesn't really have much to do with congruences. Um, so let me explain what the problem is about. So let's first make a definition of what a congruent number is. Definition. A positive integer is called a congruent number a congruent number if it is the area of a right triangle With rational sides. So, um, if you have a right triangle whose sides are rational numbers uh, and whose area is equal to an integer, then that integer is called a congruent number. So the simplest example, probably one that immediately comes to mind, is 6. So 6 is a congruent number. Because 6 is the area of the following triangle. It's a right triangle with sides 3, 4, and 5. It's just the simplest Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, and 5, and if you compute the area of this triangle, you do get 6, and you see the sides are rational numbers. In fact, they're integers in this case. Um, so the question is, which numbers are congruent numbers? So that's sort of a broad, quite vague question. Which positive integers are congruent numbers? Um, one thing to notice is the following, that um, if I increase, for example, each of these sides by a factor of 2, then the area increases by 4. So uh, 6 times 4 would also be a congruent number. If I increase each of these sides by 3, then the area increases by 9. So 9 times 6 is also a congruent number. In fact, if I take any n, and increase the sides by a factor of n, then uh, 6n squared is also a congruent number. So let's just make this as a little observation before we go into exploring any more. So observation. If n is a congruent number, and k is a positive integer, and k is any positive integer, then nk squared is also a congruent number. Right, and this follows from the fact that, so if I write n as the area of some triangle, right triangle, with sides a, b, c, then I can write nk squared as the area of a bigger triangle, um, a, k, b, k, c, k. Right. Clearly, the area of this triangle is equal to k squared times the area of the original triangle, and so nk squared. And secondly, it's still a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem, if a, b, and c, this doesn't look like a right triangle, right? I'll just let me correct the picture here. 
if a, b, and c are three rationals such that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then clearly a k squared plus b k squared, sorry, a squared k squared plus b squared k squared is going to be c squared k squared as well. Um, so, so for example, six times four, six times nine, six times sixteen, six times twenty-five, and so on, are all congruent numbers. Okay, but that's sort of not a, such an interesting example. I mean, it's not that interesting example. The interesting example is, of course, 6, the one that is uh, an integer that is square-free, so it doesn't have some factor squared um, in it, uh, and another factor that already is a congruent number. Okay, so 6 is kind of the obvious one. Uh, So let's see, what about 5? Now 5 doesn't look like it's a congruent number, at least I mean I can't really think of easily of a triangle that would have rational sides, would be a right triangle, and whose area would be 5. Um, however, that's just because uh, it's easy to see, it's easy to think about triangles that have integer sides, but the definition just says that their sides have to be rationals, they don't have to be integers. Um, and that sort of brings the game to a whole new level because it's not like we can easily, in our minds, just come up with rationals that actually give you a right triangle and give you an area that's an integer. So 5 turns out to be a, a um, congruent number and the sides are a three halves. Uh, just want to make, I want to just write them correctly. So this is three halves. Uh, then there is uh, twenty thirds, and the third one should be forty one sixth. Well, let's see. The area of a right triangle, right? It's just the product of the two legs divided by two. So this times that is 3 times 20 is 60 divided by 6, sorry, 60 divided by 6, so that's 10, divided by 2 is 5. So it's, it's got the correct area. Let's just make sure that this is actually a right triangle. So let's to check here, 3 halves squared plus 20 thirds squared, what do we get? That's 9 fourths plus 400 over 9, um, common denominator, uh, 4 times 9, so um, 36, so we get um, 81 plus 1600, so that's 1681 divided by 36, and it is indeed 41 sixth squared. <clears throat> so this is really a right triangle. So 5 is another example of a congruent number. Um, what about some other ones? Um, so 7. Seven is a congruent number. It is the area of the following triangle. Again, there's no, there are no integers that make 7 a congruent number. These have to be rationals. Um, and the rationals are uh, 24 over 5. Thirty-five over twelve, and uh, three hundred thirty-seven over sixty. Um, so as you see, these numbers get actually pretty big. I mean, not big in the absolute sense, but the numerators and denominators get pretty big. Seven is not such a big number. Um, so. Another thing is that 1 is not a congruent number. 1 is not a congruent number. 
And that's actually was proven by Fermat. So let's give ourselves a list of congruent numbers up to some uh, bound so that we get some idea of, of um, what's the smallest one and so on. So a list, a complete, complete list of congruent numbers. Um, <clears throat> up to 30. is this. So we said it's 5, 6, and 7. These three we actually wrote down. Then there's a 13, 14, 15, um, 20, 21, uh, 22, 23, and 24 we know is a congruent number because 6 is, and uh, 24 is just 6 times 2 squared. Then 28, 29 and 30. Okay? If you ask me for a pattern, um, I have no clue. I, I, don't, I don't know whether there is a pattern, uh, what the pattern would be here. Um, and in fact, that's sort, of, uh, that's sort of part of the congruent number problem, is that we don't really have a pattern for these congruent numbers. Um, so, Let's formulate this problem a little differently because while we don't really have a full easy answer as to which numbers are congruent numbers, one, I, I hope that uh, this does look kind of interesting. Um, so people have been looking at this problem for a very, very long time because it's, uh, it's like one of these these challenges in mathematics that is like uh, you can explain it to a high schooler and they can go home and try to like come up with these right triangles so that it actually works but then to actually be able to say something more generally about it is actually very difficult and, and people have not been able to figure out uh, which like if I give you a number if there is some sort of criterion we can apply uh, to guess if this number is congruent or not at least can't really prove that uh, our guess is correct. Um, so let's reformulate this problem in a slightly different way. So, um, so n is so so n congruent number. It is the area of a right triangle, A, B, C. Okay, my right triangles, I somehow have problems drawing a right triangle today. Right, so the hypotenuse is C and the two legs are A and B. So the area is equal to A, B over two. And remember our assumption is that A and B are rational numbers. And N is an integer. And the second restriction is that it has to be a right triangle, and that can be algebraically expressed by the fact that c squared has to be equal to a squared plus b squared. Um, so we have these two conditions, and in fact, <clears throat> if we can find an integer n and these rationals a, b, and c that satisfy these two equations, then we know we have a congruent number. So now we're going to make a certain substitution here. Um, you might be wondering why I'm making this substitution. Well, I'm making it because I know it's going to produce something interesting. Okay, but uh, for now you have to believe me when I make the substitution. Uh, that, that it's actually going to be a worthwhile calculation. So I'm going to set x to be equal to uh, n a plus c divided by, uh, divided by b, sorry. And I'm going to make y equal to uh, 2n squared um, a plus c divided by b squared. And I just want you to note notice that they're both 
positive rational numbers, right? Because a and c and b are rationals, n is an integer, so this is actually a positive rational number, and this also is a positive rational number. Okay, and now I'm going to compute a few quantities uh, given these numbers. So first, the, the first thing that I want to compute is the square of y. So I'm going to start over here. So I'm assuming I have a congruent number n, and I have a triangle a, b, c, and then I'm, I'm setting these two. Yes, maybe let's write this down here. So we're assuming there is a right triangle. with rational sides A, B, C whose area is equal to N which is a positive integer. Okay, so with these assumptions we just make this the substitution. This is X and this is Y. Okay, so let's first compute uh, Y squared. So y squared. So I'm going to square this number and what do I get? Well I get 4 n to the fourth a plus c squared divided by b to the fourth. Let's write it all out. That's going to be 4 n to the fourth a squared plus 2ac plus c squared divided by um, by b to the fourth and um, okay now let's write down um, x cubed so x cubed will be n cubed a plus c cubed over b cubed and uh, finally the last term I want is n squared x. So n squared x is going to be n cubed a plus c divided by b. Okay and in the next part we'll manipulate these formulas to get something um, interesting.